Hi, this is part six of my series on stick floats. Hopefully there's some more to come after this. In this part, I want to talk about John Allerton, one of the great names of the Trent match anglers and one who made the stick float a byword for success. John had his own approach to stick floats and that approach developed over quite a few years. He was already winning on the Trent by the late 60s and that success was built on over the years as the Trent changed from casters to maggots in the early to mid 70s. There was a float around in the early 70s called a carrot float and that's what it was, a small bolster float with quite a pronounced shoulder and a fairly thin tip around about three or four millimetres tapered tip. Ivan Marks features these carrot floats in his catalogues of the mid 70s and he certainly wasn't the first or only angler to use these floats. What John Allerton did was take a carrot float and make it into a stick float by using what I believe is alloy welding rod of 1.6 millimetres to give it a stable stem. Wire stem sticks were nothing new. They've been around uh, since the 60s. Billy Lane's Ultra Float Company was selling wire stem stick floats using piano wire or stainless wire but these alloy stem floats fish differently with that shoulder you could hold them back overshot them they don't cast as well as the best sticks for casting the ones made with plastic stems and heavy lignum stems but they are very stable especially in the boilier swims of the Trent and elsewhere I've got a good selection of John's range here. The original ones, which are ones like this, which I've shown uh, blown up. A fairly slim float, fairly short tip, around about a quarter of an inch long, around about four millimetres thick. The Mark II float, which is this one, it's got a thicker body, more of a taper to the tip, less of a shoulder and the Mark III ones, which are these, are more the carrot top, the longer tip, an even thicker body and a fairly bulbous bit near the top of the body and then tapering off, all with the alloy, alloy stems. There was more to John than just floats. Fantastic float control is part of his success and he also used to experiment with maggots and casters, especially the mid 70s onwards. It was by no means clear cut whether casters were the best bait on the day or maggots. So he tried feeding a few of both and he didn't feed that heavy. He tended to feed 10 or 12 maggots or casters at a time. Some anglers at the time talked of giving them a gallon, feeding four pints, six pints, even eight pints which might be good if you had a, a massive head of uh, chub queuing up for the bait, but the roach needed something more subtle. The roach often need time to start to feed. They need coaxing into turning on to feeding. If you give them a lot of bait, and this is true of any roach fishing, they often don't like it. They just switch off and, and move away. But by putting a few maggots in, Initially, there's not much response, but gradually one or two will start to take the bait. They'll feed a bit more avidly, then others will pick it up. And John was a great believer, and is a great believer, that the roach were there in his swim. But it was a matter of finding out the right presentation to catch them. And that might involve, in a downstream wind, casting downstream, feeding downstream, to find that killing ground where the bait hit the bottom on the river. He wasn't worried about perfect presentation from a point in front of him right down to the bottom of the swim. Somewhere down that swim, two thirds of the way down maybe, there was that sweet spot. Getting that float to go through absolutely right in that yard or so, that's what mattered. To aid him in a downstream wind, he might use back shot number eights, even two or three of those. And he favoured a long rod. Uh, there have been a few rods with his name on over the years, principally made by TriCast. I've got the latest one, the Premier Match, a 
13 foot. But one of his favourite rods was a 20 foot rod, uh, Milo New Era, cut down to 17 feet. And with that, he could gain a bit of extra control in, in bad windy conditions. I think the main lesson to learn from John Allerton is that you've got to do it right. You've got to work on your floats, get the right floats, work on the shotting, work on that feeding. The feeding is important. Don't rush at the roach. Be patient. And once you've got them feeding, find out the presentation that they want on the day. His consistency was absolutely amazing. His match career spans a far longer time than John Dean's ever did. And when the river became quite tough in the early 90s, he switched to commercials where he still fishes. He does still fish the Trent occasionally and he's certainly capable of catching plenty of fish there. But that big match scene is largely gone. To show his dedication to what he was trying to do, he used to favour Mitchell match reels, which I still do, although he switched to the more modern reels since. And he actually bent the stem of the reels so that it pointed absolutely perfectly to the first eye on the rod. Quite how he did it, whether he used the welding torch to soften up the metal of the, the stem, you certainly can't just bend it, it will snap, it's um, a casting. So, and you can't just put put it on your uh, hob and expect enough heat. I think he must have used a welding torch on it to heat it up. Not something I'm going to try in a hurry. Maybe I'll find out exactly what he did do to, to bend those uh, real stems the way he did. I hope you've enjoyed this video. John's floats are still available if you look online. Uh, I've got nothing, no commercial interest in those and they're a slightly different float to the ones I've shown you on here, but still more or less the same float. And other manufacturers have made similar floats over the years, including Drennan and Preston, Dave Harrell and so on with alloy stems. And I've made a few myself. With stick floats, experiment if you like, make floats. They're not hard to make. Electric drill will act as a lathe, a bit of sandpaper. Just need to centre the stem, a couple of coats of varnish, bit of uh, fluorescent uh, undercoat white and then fluorescent and off you go. So again, hope you've enjoyed this. I may yet do another one on stick floats. We'll see. I'm just going to leave you with a brief reminder that not long ago, it was late summer as we move into autumn. The roach are still around and as the weed drops, we move into the proper winter fishing. See you soon.